Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Last time I showed you the Quincy Shelter, which, while sexy, is a huge amount of effort. And for one person, I think it's way too much for a survival situation. Sometimes what you need is a very fast shelter to get you out the elements, the wind, the snow, and somewhere where you can hunker down for the night. Today we're going to be looking at a snow trench. Now this should be quite fast to do. And that's the purpose. Even in a blizzard, you can quickly dig yourself a tro tent, uh, snow trench, get inside and hide until the weather passes. It's not long term, but it is fast. Watch me. First thing we're going to do is mark out the area of the trench. Obviously, the trench has to be your height. So what we're going to do is just make the preliminary walls up to four guide trees. Because we are literally just making a trench. So we make our trench area. Now what we do, we clear all the snow and basically form walls. That's all we do. And the walls have to get as high as possible to block out the elements. Okay, on both sides of the wall. Very similar to the Quincy, what we're doing is packing powdered snow together and then leaving it to crystallize. When it crystallizes, it'll form a hard wall. So, let's get this wall started. As you can see, I've got minimal equipment with me. Exactly as though I were hiking in the forest and got caught out. I'll go through the equipment in a minute, but the only thing unusual I have with me is my Russian snow, sh my Russian shovel, my special forces Spetsnaz shovel, because it's small enough to go in a rucksack. And in winter, out in the wilderness, you have to have some form of shovel because you will be moving snow. And machetes and axes and knives just don't do the same job. So, even in freezing conditions, this is hot work and sweaty work. Not as bad as the Quincy, because it's a lot quicker, but be prepared to have a set of clothes to change into, or have a means of drying out your clothes. Because when you stop working, the sweat will freeze, and then you will.
find a good spot, you need four fairly slim trees, which are strong. Don't forget, in winter we're freezing rain and ice, snow uh, and snow. Trees have a tendency to come down on you as widow makers. So make sure they're strong and make sure you have fairly flat ground with a decent amount of snow around you so you can scrape it up. Ideally for this sort of shelter, you get it to a certain height and then you leave it for a few hours like a Quincy so the snow hardens and then you can pile more on top. Or start at one end and then by the time you get back again it should be fairly hard and you can keep building up in layers. If you have really deep snow, obviously you can use snow blocks, but in most situations the snow shelter is more for, the snow trench is more for uh, powdered snow. So just keep going and going and going until you're out of the way of the wind. Okay, once you've got a suitable height, which will cover you to basically just above waist height while you're lying sideways on the ground in case you sleep in the fetal position then it's time to put up the tarp there are lots of options here you could make an A-frame out of sticks you could make an A-frame out of pine boughs you could cover it with snow but this is an emergency shelter and chances are if you're going out into the wilderness in winter you're going to be carrying either an emergency tarp, a poncho or at minimum a mylar blanket and you can easily do this with a mylar blanket. I'm going to use my old Czechoslovak army poncho just to show you how simple it is to make a snow trench. This bag is something I'd recommend. It's actually a, a spent ammo bag, which goes onto your webbing or your belt. And it folds up, rolls up into this little package. And I normally use this when I'm mushroom picking because I can carry it tiny rolled up on my belt. And if I find some interesting mushrooms or something else, I can just slip it into this bag and expand it. But when I go hammock camping or tarp camping, I use it for carrying bungee cords, paracord and string. And that's what I'm using it for today. A rollable ammo bag. Okay, you saw how quickly I could put this tent up, this tarp. And at the moment, we've got 
our basic walls all the way around it. Now we need to adjust it. By adjusting it, we need the rear to come down so there's no gap between it and the snow. So very little gap. But more importantly, more importantly, we need to bring the sides of the trench in so they're not beyond the tarp. Because when the snow falls, we want it to roll off the tarp away from our trench. We want to be inside the tarp space. So, a bit more work, but it's worth it. Bring it in. Already the snow has started to crystallize. Now the front bit is where we're going to have our fire. We're going to sit. So for now, we'll have this raised. We're only worried about the back bit. When night comes, we're going to drop this whole tarp. So this comes over the snow. And what we'll do is we'll put some snow on top or some heavy branches to pull it down. But like I said, this is a temporary shelter. You're trying to do this as quickly as possible. If you're gonna make a nice living area, then yeah, something like a Quincy or a snow burrow into a deep drift, or even better yet, build a lean-to or A-frame out of wood, branches, leaves if you can find them, and then pack that with snow. It's gonna be a lot more substantial in the long run. Plus, in the long run, you're going to need more space to live in. This is to stop you from dying from wind chill for a night. I always take an axe because you'll need it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find some bedding for the interior. Really what we're looking for is pine boughs, fir, spruce, that sort of thing. But you may not always find yourself in a pine environment, in a coniferous environment. For example, where I am now, we're at a much lower level than where the, the pines start. So you have to make do. Now there's a few ways we could do this. The simplest is just piling up twigs and branches. It's not gonna be comfortable, but you will hopefully have some form of insulating mat with you, like a carry mat. If not, you're just gonna to have to sleep on twigs and branches. But you use anything to raise yourself above the, uh, the snow level. grasses or whatever. Right, give me a minute. I had planned on returning to the snow trench and making a cup of tea on a little open fire and show you how to basically start a small fire under freezing conditions. But ironically, a full white out blizzard hit. I was suddenly in the situation where I actually had to use the snow shelter. I thought my camera had been recording, 
but the buildup of snow, I presume on the lens or the mechanism, showed that it had gone into some strange sleep mode. So unfortunately I don't have footage. But there are two old sayings which really spring to mind. One is, put your money where your mouth is, and the other is, the proof is in the pudding. And I can honestly say, when that blizzard hit, I just hunkered down beneath the tarp. I pulled it as low as possible, so there was basically no gaps outside the, the snow walls. And I laid there waiting while the wind howled. And it went on until dark. And then I basically made the decision to make the long trek home, which is a, a couple of miles through sometimes waist-deep snow, carrying all my equipment and camera equipment. But I can tell you now from personal experience, the snow shelter, the snow trench, will keep you out of a blizzard. It's not that comfortable. It's not something you'd want to spend a long time in but it really does work as a survival shelter. As always, be free.